It is that time of the year again. We are almost at the end of 2020 and boy has it been a crazy year. It has also been a very transformative year. We have had more time than ever to figure out what to do, things to do to entertain ourselves. We have had more time to think and decide what is important and not. And this comes now to the best product of 2020 for natural hair, for growth, for length retention, for health, for everything. Now I do want to start by saying, I know this has been a rough year for everyone and most of these products I actually didn't buy this year. They have actually lasted me that long and by no means am I saying go out and buy every single one of these products. I'm just saying maybe I'll mention one that you already have and love and you'll be like, yes, I like it too. Or you might be looking for one specific thing like a shampoo or conditioner that you want to buy and possibly in this video you're going to find that one or two products and you can buy them from your local beauty supply store or if you want to buy them online you can buy them from Amazon I buy almost all my products from Amazon and most of the links in the description box below will be affiliate links which means I make a tiny commission off of them if you choose to shop through them at no additional cost to you but of course if you don't feel comfortable doing that you can go ahead and shop from wherever you want no pressure let's get into these products I'm basically listing them in the order that I would use them and then maybe it gets a little random towards the end okay so so the first thing that I would love to talk about is a pre-shampoo and it is this one by Moisture Miracle. It is the aloe and coconut water pre-shampoo. It's got a very slimy-ish consistency, kind of like aloe vera and it has basically lasted me the whole year. The reason is I don't constantly feel the need to do a pre-shampoo unless my hair has been in braids, which I usually keep in for like a month to five weeks. When I take those down, then I need this. Otherwise, if I use this every single week, I would go through so many of them because you kind of need a lot of product, but it is the best pre-shampoo I have ever tried. I've only ever tried maybe one else by Aunt Jackie's and it really wasn't anything amazing. It was literally like your any regular moisturizer or conditioner. This is the only thing that feels like it does what it's supposed to do and it actually adds like some moisture to your hair. I think that's because of the aloe in it. It has so many amazing ingredients and if you're looking for a pre-shampoo or anything just to help detangle your hair if it's very tangled, I highly recommend this. Next, let's go into of course the next logical step. It is a co-wash so honestly some of the products in this list would not necessarily be like the best product you can possibly find it's one of those products that you just don't even think about it's just the first thing you reach for and you use it and usually those are the best products because you even forget you don't even think about having to use it you just pick it up and you use it so this is one of those things it's not something I would be like oh my god this is so amazing I need to buy it but every single time I want to co-wash my hair this is usually what I pick up and this is the herbal essences Brazilian passion conditioner I have tried four or five different types of herbal essences conditioners herbal if you're american and i love all of them across the board so not only do i recommend this one i think it's mostly the smells that are different honestly i recommend this one because it's the one i've been using the most but my favorite one is like the blue one i think it's called happy hydration and then they have so many other ones that have like less parabens and stuff and those are the ones i would recommend so honestly for this i'd say any herbal herbal essences conditioners as a co-wash is amazing they are very light so they go through the hair they provide your hair with lots of slip they wash out very easily and don't leave any residue and they leave your hair feeling very clean which is all i want from these things to do i do not recommend using expensive conditioners to co-wash because it literally stays in your hair for a couple minutes and you wash it out you don't need anything expensive. The next thing I'm recommending is a shampoo, and I don't remember if I recommended this last year as well, but it is the Cream of Nature Mango, Mango and Shea Butter Ultra Moisturizing Shampoo. I find that shampoo is one of the products that I can afford to spend a little bit more on, although I don't. <laughs> but I could if I wanted to, but I don't because this I think lasted me almost the whole year and it's only a small bottle. This is 354 mils. I did get the giant one recently and because I use such little of it, I only shampoo my hair about once a month or twice if I do a style that has a lot of products in it or something like that. Yes, it is a sulfate shampoo. If I wash my hair with shampoo more often, I would go the sulfate free route, but I basically haven't done that this year, so I don't even have one on hand. But if you are looking for one, I'd recommend anything from the Shea Moisture line, except the Yucca and Plantain one. 
not because it doesn't do the job it does an amazing job it's one of the con it's one of the shampoos that leaves your hair feeling the softest like you co-washed your hair but it's actually a shampoo the reason i don't recommend it is because it's too expensive in terms of it's the same price as almost all the other shampoos but you have to use so much for it to actually clean your hair and lather it up so i find it too expensive and not worth the money i would recommend basically anything else from their lines the next product i would recommend is a conditioner and it is this one this is the coconut and hibiscus i think there's a car driving in the coconut and hibiscus curl and shine conditioner this conditioner is so amazing i use it as a conditioner i use it as a leave-in conditioner Please ignore the car noise in the background, but I also use this as a leave-in conditioner. I use it as like a pre-styler. I also use it as a co-wash very rarely if I'm out of all if I'm out of all my co-washing conditioners, I'll use this as well, but I don't use it often only because it's on the expensive side and I like it to actually stay in my hair. It doesn't leave any buildup or anything and it says it's for thick curly hair, but it is quite a medium texture, so I don't think only thick people only people ah, thick people <laughs> i don't think only people with thick hair have to use this i think if you have medium hair you can use it as well but if you have fine hair it might be a little too heavy to leave in your hair but possibly to just condition and wash out it would be an amazing thing so this is amazing and i think you get one of some of the most bang for your buck with this product the next product I'll recommend is a deep conditioner and I'm only mentioning one only because my other favorite deep conditioner, I did mention it in last year's video and that is the Shea Moisture and Manuka Honey Deep Conditioner but this year my favorite one has been the Split End Repair Mask by Eden Body Works and this has just been so amazing. I did not expect it. It's very affordable because you get so much in the, in the package. This is 473 mils. 16 fluid ounces and I have used this multiple times and I'm only about halfway it is a very thick product so definitely for medium to thick hair and the only reason why I'm saying medium as well is because despite how thick it looks once you add water to it and when you put it on soaking wet hair I highly recommend you do that the first time I used it on like you know dampish hair and I didn't like it I felt like it didn't do anything for my hair it just felt like a regular conditioner but if you put it on soaking wet hair, it kind of lathers up like a shampoo. It adds slip to your hair. It goes so well into your hair and it absorbs. It makes your hair feel nice and soft and strong. Now, also side note, you cannot repair split ends. You can only improve the appearance of split ends by making the hair like more like, you know, sleek and kind of stuck together at the bottom. The only way to get rid of split ends is to cut them off. But... If you're looking for a mask that helps prevent getting additional split ends and maybe just improving the appearance of the ones you have before you cut them off, this is a mask I would highly recommend. And even if you don't have split ends, honestly, it just feels amazing. It has glycerin, almond oil, it has coconut oil, aloe vera leaf juice, hydrogenated castor oil, cocoa seed butter. It has so many amazing ingredients and I rarely ever see this being talked about on youtube and maybe they just don't advertise enough eden body works if you want an ad call me i'll do an ad for this but yes definitely i think this needs to be talked about more it is an amazing deep conditioner i don't know if they have a smaller size but if they have a smaller size i would recommend you try it because it is that good the next thing that I loved is my leave-in cream. This one is completely finished. I was going to throw it out and then I remembered I needed to film this video. So I had to get it out of the trash. But anyway, this is the Moisture Miracle Coconut Oil and Baobab Oil Hydrate and Strengthen Leave-In Cream. And this is a perfect example of what I say about products being perfectly formulated. If I did this as a DIY product, if I got aloe vera, you know, blended it, do the whole thing, and mix it in with some baobab oil and coconut oil, I 100% know my hair was going to hate it. Only because my hair hates coconut oil. But coconut oil formulated perfectly into a product, most of the time, my hair works great. I'm pretty sure this, yeah, this has coconut in it, my pre-shampoo has coconut in it, and this has coconut in it, and my hair loves it so much. If I was to get pure coconut oil, this happens instantly. Literally, as soon as I put it on my hair, my hair feels hard instantly, like seconds later. So this is why I always say, trust people who know how to formulate products. They're scientists, they know how to make it work. Some products that have too much coconut in it don't work on my hair, but products like this, first ingredient is water, then there's shea butter, glycerin, grape seed oil then there's coconut oil which means it's just a little bit of it and this actually 
This leave-in cream, first of all, is so affordable. It is so much. Another one that is huge, it's um, 15 fluid ounces and 425 grams. That's almost half a kg. If you're not American, you know, we measure things in kgs. Almost half a kg. It is super thick. It just finished recently. It is moisturizing. It is sealing onto the hair. You still need to seal with an oil, of course, but it just feels... I just couldn't believe it because it is so affordable compared to all the other leave-in creams that like work pretty well. I highly recommend this leave-in conditioner if you haven't tried it. It is one of the very affordable ones and I think you can afford to try something like this. And yeah, when I do my braid outs, when I do my twists outs, when I just do braids as a protective style, like in any scenario that I want to use it, I will use this product. The only time I will not use it is when I'm doing like a flat ironing routine because it is on the heavy side and it will... With it would make my flat ironed hair look like a little sticky and like I said and like I said I've only done that or did I say it in this video I don't know I've only straightened my hair once this month this is the second time I've blow dried my hair and I used something else this time but number one moisturizer of the year the award goes to this one okay so next is my leave-in treatment aka leave-in conditioner so this leave-in cream I never use like a leave-in cream and then a moisturizer or a leave-in conditioner then a moisturizer I just pick one or the other I don't think it's worth it I think I mean if I'm gonna shampoo or co-wash and then condition there's no need for me to do a leave-in and then a moisturizer it's basically the same thing I like to make my routine as short as possible while getting the most benefits I can so this is what I use as a moisturizer then if I don't use this and I'm doing like a blow-dry routine like this I will use this silicone free miracle styler leave-in treatment by Shea Moisture this stuff is amazing and you can see that I've had this for the whole year and I still have up to there because I don't I don't blow dry my hair often the first time I got this and I tried it I actually thought I don't think it really does anything for me because it's super thin and my hair is very thick and needs a lot of moisture and heavy products and when I tried this I really wasn't impressed I just thought mm, I don't know you know it just doesn't do much for me and when I used it on blow-dried hair even just to maintain my blow-dry by the way if you want a video on how to maintain blow-dried hair let me know in the comment section below and I'll definitely make one just comment yes and I'll know what you mean um, but yes, this product is actually amazing. You don't need to use too much of it. It's very lightweight, so you can use it on all hair types. You don't need to use too much of it. And it seems like if I was to give an award to the one ingredient that has shown up for me this year, it would be marshmallow root because it's in my deep conditioner and it's in my leave-in. It's something I never really heard much about. I didn't think it was anything amazing. But I've realized that my hair actually really, really likes it. So... If you're looking for products that work well, that feel moisturizing to your hair, try something with marshmallow root and specifically this Shea Moisture product. I love it. It's kind of expensive for how much you get in a bottle, but for me it's not expensive because I rarely blow dry or add heat to my hair, which is when I use this, so it's worth it for me. The next product is an oil. Now, this is kind of, there's a few here because I literally couldn't pick one. If I had to pick one that I just had to buy at once, it would be the Do Grow mega growth formula hair oil now is it something amazing that would make your hair grow overnight absolutely not it basically works exactly the same as the oil mix i make at home would i repurchase this unless i can find the oils i usually use and this happens to be cheaper i would repurchase it it works well but it's nothing amazing so if you don't want to mix a bunch of oils and you just want to buy one oil i would recommend buying this one but if you want to mix them these are the oils I have used the most this month. Olive oil, unfortunately the bottle's in the kitchen and I just have no energy to go and get it, but any extra, ver any extra virgin olive oil will do. I used a lot of almond oil this year. I had two bottles of these and I've gone through both of the bottles. I love almond oil. I did not know how much my hair loves it until I ran out of all my other oils and this was the only carrier oil I had. My hair loves almond oil so much, I will always keep it in my, in my routine, so this almond oil again any extra virgin or cold pressed almond oil would work great everything will be linked in the description box below as i said and then these next oils are some of the most important oils that you should never use by themselves always dilute into a carrier oil like olive macadamia almond 
avocado, whatever. And these are essential oils. And these are the oils that make you see the most difference in the shortest period of time. The first one is peppermint oil. You guys know I love this. I use it in almost everything wherever I can. Even in my shampoo sometimes. If you haven't seen my shampoo hack, I will link my full wash day routine in the eye right there so you can check it out. So you can see how I use peppermint oil in the shower. Next, organic tea tree oil and rosemary oil. These are such amazing hair growth oils. I'm not getting very much into detail into these things because I want to run through as many products as possible without wasting time. I have explained a bunch of things about oils and how all these products work in previous videos. So for now, we're just focusing on the best products. So for serums, I actually have two. These have been my two favorites, the John Frieda Frizzy Serum and the BioSilk Silk Therapy. I only use the Silk Therapy when flat ironing my hair, so that means I've only used it like once. Um, it is amazing, it is lightweight, it feels amazing on the hair. I occasionally use this on my wig, but not that much because, I mean, I'm not putting that much money in someone else's hair. Um, and then the John Frieda Frizzies is something that initially I thought it was pretty expensive, but it's actually not because it is so thick and you only need a little bit. Like if I divide my hair into four, I will use four pumps and I'm done for all my hair. So it is for thick, coarse hair. So if you have fine hair, I would highly suggest you go with the bio silk or something else because it will weigh your hair down. For me, I can be generous with it and my hair still feels amazing. I can't be generous with it when I flat iron. I just stick to the bio silk. But this is another serum that is amazing. I use it when I blow dry my hair and sometimes even when I moisturize my hair, I will seal with this and it actually makes my hair feel amazing and it just adds like it makes your hair feel hydrated and smooth so I would highly recommend one or both of these serums okay so now I'm going to recommend some combs and these have been the best combs of the year I give these the best this one I have been using for a much longer time and it is a Denman brush specifically the black Denman brush this has been the best for detangling for styling it's just an amazing sturdy brush it is the best brush for blow drying and flat ironing if you're into that I highly highly recommend this brush this is one of the most expensive tools I've ever bought in terms of like a brush and it is one of the few things that I'll actually say is worth the money I basically use this the whole year and it still looks new. The teeth are perfect. The rubber is perfect. The back is perfect. The only thing that faded is the word Denman was gold and now it's gone. Doesn't affect the efficiency of the brush, so I don't care about this. The next one is a more recent one, but it's something I have been loving so much since I tried it. And it is the best tool, aka the easy detangling brush. I swear they're all exactly the same. The only thing that's the only one that I would say is different is the OG Felicia Leatherwood brush which I kind of want now, but for now I'll continue using this one. It is amazing. The teeth are all separated. I have done a whole detangling video where I use and talk about this brush more like a review. The teeth are separated. They separate as you comb your hair. It works on wet hair. It works on dry hair. And you can just see like it moves with your hair. It doesn't snag at your hair. And it just makes your hair feel so, so amazing. Continuing with tools, this is another thing that I started using only about halfway through the year. Maybe I would say accessories. And it is silk or satin scrunchies. These ones were gifted to me by Re Makeup Revolution. They usually send me like makeup and skincare sometimes and they gifted me these and oh my god, they are so amazing. You don't need to buy these. I know most of you are not based in the UK so they might be a little bit difficult to find. But on Amazon, there's a pack that I'm actually going to buy. It's a huge pack of multicolored different satin scrunchies and they just feel so amazing they don't leave dents in your hair even when you tie your hair it doesn't feel like there's a dent afterwards and one thing is like if you tie your hair a lot there's a very high chance that you're going to develop a lot of dryness in that area because the hair ties kind of suck up the moisture in that area this prevents that it is very gentle on the hair it is very soft and usually doesn't rip out any hair when you're taking it out so if you've never thought of trying silk or satin scrunchies i highly suggest trying them before I tried them, I honestly, I just wanted them, but I was just like, you know, I just want them to want them. I don't think they'll actually do anything. But now that I've used them, they actually do make a big difference, so I highly recommend them too. The next thing is these hair clips. I have used them throughout the year. I think they're so cute. I love the colors. I'm usually one to go for all black, but these are just very nice, like, pastel colors. But it's not about the colors. It is about the clips. None of them have broken. I've been using them for almost a whole year. They are, like, very, very sturdy, proper, like, crocodile clips. And this part moves. 
So when you clip it onto your hair, like it kind of clips down and makes sure that it doesn't move. It also doesn't rip out your hair, but like if you don't know how to clip your hair and you just shove things in and then like pull them out, these teeth will definitely pull your hair out. So you definitely need to use them properly and don't just shove them in your hair anyhow. But they hold so much hair. I have very thick hair and it's hard for me to find clips that actually hold my hair because once I clip my hair, after a couple seconds, my hair just unravels and the clip either flies away or I've broken multiple hair clips. So. I highly recommend these. They're amazing for sectioning. I'm pretty sure there's like eight or ten in a pack. They are pretty affordable and just like the Denman brush, the only thing that has changed is that the word has kind of rubbed off. But the brand is the brand is from R. And I love these clips so much. I highly, highly recommend them. That's all I can say about them. The next product is my blow dryer. Now my blow dryer, I can see it there, but it's just like it's kind of dusty and the box. I keep it inside the box because I don't play those games. These tools are the most expensive hair tools, heat tools I have ever purchased in my life. So I keep them in the box that I bought them in because I don't want any dust or dirt or anything getting on them. But I will put them on the screen and maybe I can show a little clip of me using them. The GHD blow dryer is a game changer. My whole life I have only used regular drugstore dryers. Okay, the diffuser is broken, but anyway. The Tony and Guy blow dryer, which I now use on my wig, just like maximum, maybe $20. How much is that? Yeah, I think like a maximum of $20, somewhere there. I would not go over that because I'm like, it's just a blow dryer. All I needed to do is dry my hair. I don't need it to do anything amazing. There's no need to pay that much money. Until I use the GHD and I'm like, oh my God, there is a reason why certain blow dryers are expensive. I used it to blow dry my hair today. Well, not today, but the hair you're seeing here was blow dried with the GHD and it's actually been a week since I blow dried my hair and it still looks this amazing. I mean, I have never had a blow dry last this long unless I flat iron it and sometimes even the flat iron wouldn't come out so great, but this blow dryer combined with a Danone brush is the best thing that's ever happened to me. I only flat iron my hair one to two times a year and when I do it, I need it to be bomb and be like, oh my god, this is amazing. So yes, this blow dryer is pretty expensive. I'm pretty sure when I bought it, there was a sale. Like, maybe I bought it on Black Friday last year or something like that. But I've had it for a while and it is the most amazing blow dryer I have ever tried. I know there's other popular ones like... There's the Something Freak by... I don't know, the name is gone right now, but there's a Sadu blow dryer that's very popular, a Babyliss blow dryer that's very popular. The GHD is more popular in the UK, I think, but if you have never tried an expensive blow dryer or just go to a hair salon that uses a GHD blow dryer and just like try that. But to get a professional blow dry, like I never go to the hair salon, so it's affordable for me. The amount of times I would go to a hair salon to get something professionally done using those products, Using those products would cost me, cost me so much more money eventually and if I can just do it myself with the professional tool at home, I would choose that any day. So honestly, I think that using an expensive professional, doesn't have to be expensive, but a professional blow dryer, which usually is a little bit more expensive than the drugstore ones, makes a difference. It dries your hair much faster, which means it locks in the moisture and it doesn't make you over dry your hair it gives your hair a nice smoothness i can't even explain it this blow dryer is just the truth if you've been looking for a high-end blow dryer this is the one to get next let's go into the next heat styling tool and this is a flat iron and my favorite flat iron is the Sadu flat iron i actually was convinced by the glam twins all the videos i had watched where they use this flat iron i was like you know what i think this one is for me i'm pretty sure i also found it on sale on the day i bought it because honestly i'm lucky like that i always find sales but i would have paid full price for it the flat iron is amazing the plates are super wide it's not titanium it's ceramic but they actually distribute the heat so evenly, you can do a big section at a time. It doesn't snag at your hair. Your hair is nice and smooth. The ends are kind of like beveled and the plate kind of starts like a quarter of an inch inside. So even when you put it near your scalp, it doesn't burn you. You get such professional, amazing results and you don't have to pass over your hair multiple times. I highly, highly suggest that product. Also, if you're looking into getting a 
professional flat iron, but of course you could always go with the very popular Babyliss Titanium nano titanium i think flat iron which i've heard is also amazing but i haven't personally used it that was the end of all these products guys i think this video is gonna be like 25 minutes and i hope i can cut it down so it's not too long let me know in the comment section below what your favorite product was did i mention it or maybe it's a completely different one whether it's a diy or something you purchased please let me know in the comment section below i would love to know hit my face right there if you didn't subscribe in the beginning hit my face here subscribe to my other channel watch the two videos on the side of the screen right here if you'd like to see any of my older videos thank you so much for watching and i'll see you guys in my next one bye